Folks, this came out of nowhere. <sighs> if you were blind! Well, folks, I've wasted three weeks on Finn's double-decker train wreck of a life, so what better way to cap off this look back on shipping in Adventure Time than by talking about the finale hookup that was actually planned out? Is while everyone can debate the finale to Adventure Time into oblivion, it was the piece of gum kissing a vampire after ten seasons of subtle foreshadowing that produced a flood of delight amongst fans and a long sigh of relief as we could finally say they aren't just good friends. I'm Sarcastic Horse, and today we'll be tracking the evolution of Bubbleine. Why I love it, why I love her, her, and basically why I love everything about these walking disasters. Let's start this love fest with the queen of vampires herself, Marceline. Now, I'll go way more in depth on Marcy than Bubblegum. Already did a video where I talked about PB, and I only repeat myself when it's an editing, editing mistake. So Marceline the Vampire Queen was always great, standing atop a long tradition of that older cool cartoon girl every kid had a crush on, with even the show agreeing. And fought that sexy vampire lady. Marceline was hot, mischievous, and not like, oh, small prank, haha, ha, no, she would actively go out of her way to fuck with people. Her first episode, she shows up just to flex, kill Jake, and kick the boys out of their house twice, for giving Finn a peck on the cheek, twice, <laughs> and giving them back their house after a good brawl. And this intro pretty much cemented her as a fan favorite immediately, because from the voice, the style, the chaotic personality, she was a badass guitar playing rock star, and we were into that. And just from the aesthetic, she was the coolest character in the show by a mile. Look, the first season of Adventure Time was basically every episode, felt like it was on drugs, but as the show went on, it had that bad breakup, got sober, and started thinking about its life and got depressed. The main characters, though, played on very well-established tropes. The evil wizard who kidnaps princesses, the damsel in distress, the one you hate. Marceline, in contrast, didn't have that same fantasy story counterpart, which really let her be more of her own person with an interesting personality right out of the gate. She seemed like an asshole at first, but as we got to know her, we realized she just gets a kick out of screwing with people. It isn't always actively malicious. She may have kicked Finn and Jake out of their house, but she was going to give it back. Probably. The more time we spend with Marceline, the more her devil may care attitude is revealed to be a mask for the girl who went through hell on earth. That's right, she's got daddy issues. Twice. With her biological father, Hudson Abadir, being a eldritch demon in command of the Nido Spear, which is just hell, the man hit it, quit it, he only popped into Marceline's life to steal her shit before bouncing again. He does care for his daughter, but he's basically an elder god with a very limited grasp on human interactions. Like, parents can be embarrassing, yeah, but they don't burn holes into your house and go off to eat souls kind of embarrassing. He hurts his daughter unintentionally even when he doesn't mean to. Hudson goes from negligent to overbearing at the drop of a hat and didn't even meet her till she was like a teenager trapped in the apocalypse. So to say her feelings towards him are complicated would be an understatement, but it doesn't hold a candle to her adopted father and protector, Simon Petrikov, aka the Ice King. After the Earth was destroyed in nuclear war, the planet was changed forever, as in horrific mutants and monsters were everywhere, with Marceline being alone amidst it all. That was until she was discovered by Simon, a kind man who would protect them with his cursed magical crown, but the more he used it, the more it affected his personality, growing irrational not even recognizing who Marceline was, and even himself. Marcy not only grew up in the midst of all this horror, but had to watch Simon go insane. This kind, loving man the closest thing she ever had to a father would change into the deranged Ice King, who was just as dangerous to her as he was to himself. And watching this gutting descent into madness was a horrific experience, not helped by him in one of his more lucid moments, leaving her. And they're both still alive in the modern day, but the man Marceline knew is dead. Oh, not like that! So obviously the girl's got issues, and I ate that shit up. Because yes, the cool girl who plays guitar, you got me. Give her a tragic backstory and make that carefree lifestyle facade even better. Marceline is amazing because just like her outfits, the girl's got layers. 
we figure out early on that she was just a kid during the apocalypse, and that primes us to want to know more about her, how she survived, how did she become a vampire, her relationship with the Ice King. Unlike Finn Jake, who formed new relationships as the story goes, Marceline already knows pretty much everyone anew, but all those relationships have kind of fallen apart. So mining the intrigue of who really is Marceline and how she relates to these other characters, once again, aesthetic, just made her a highlight of every episode that she was in. Because in a show filled with princesses, Marceline was the one and only queen. No, I'd be remiss to not point out the obvious shipping nonsense that was Finn and Marceline. Just met the kid and she's already slapping his ass. Very quickly, we just established them to be just friends. They're wild together. Marceline is more of a punk rock sister slash friend to Finn in all their interactions. People shipped them, of course they did, but mainly that was because if you want to date Marceline, but not brave enough to commission your own self slash Marceline fan fiction, you use Finn as a self insert. And though these two were never on my plate, Fiona and Marshall Lee. That's top tier. But that's just the general overview of Marceline, without getting into more specifics. She dated an asshole named Ash, and in spite of living for a thousand years, she's never really allowed herself to change, with lots of acquaintances, but very few friends, and even fewer that actually understand who she is. Which brings us to the massive can of worms, Princess Bubblegum. Be prepared to make him howl with pain. Now, a somewhat controversial statement, as I've done no research, Princess Bubblegum was never a top-tier character in the early parts of the series. A scientifically-minded princess who functioned as a boss, friend, and a love interest, we found her bouncing a lot of different plates. And in the reverse of Marceline, who is introduced in a way that makes us question if she's a good guy or not, before revealing the heart of gold, Bubblegum is unconditionally loving and one we are meant to trust implicitly, only for the show to reveal her to be one of the more morally ambiguous characters in the show. The initial characterization of PB was always a bit janky. Jerking from a fun friend to responsible leader to vengeful, it's not that PB wasn't all of these things, we just never really got that balance to feel like this is the definitive character. And not helping the matter was Finn simping for PB, which kept her from developing an actual relationship with him that would reveal more about her character. But that said, while I am apathetic to her early on, it's in the later seasons and the exploration of her true nature that really grabbed my attention. Yes, she's a dictator. No, like an actual dictator dictator, creating and running the Candy Kingdom almost single-handedly. Her life has been avoiding one disaster after another, becoming perfectly willing to take morally questionable actions if it means protecting her people. Whether it was torturing the Ice King for screams, setting up a surveillance state, or keeping failed experiments out of sight, out of mind, if Gaslight, Gatekeep, and Girlboss is the phrase, PB's the picture. And funny enough, finding out all the messed up shit PB has pulled is what got me to like her, as it finally solved that weird jankiness of the early series, establishing what PB is capable of, but also showing her kindness to be genuine. She's just a bit of a psychopath sometimes, and doesn't really register to her how her actions affect others. As in her mind, it's all for the greater good. The greater good. She's analytical and scientifically minded to a fault, detesting things like magic that she can't explain. That focus on quantifiable results is what caused her to neglect the emotional needs of those around her. If PB only became interesting after they dropped the Finn wants to date her plot, it's her relationship to Marceline that elevates her to my shit levels. Yes, enough about their sad single lives, let's talk about them getting together. Now, bear in mind that Adventure Time came out in the early 2010s, where LGBT representation in kids cartoons were locked in a glass box labeled implied. Like, there were gay characters. A lot of them were stereotypes, meant to be jokes, or you had actually great examples like Ray and Archer. No, you're a little bitch. Will you remember this conversation? Probably not, no. Well then, f off. But if you wanted examples that the general masses will watch and complain about, then you're left with strong maybes or situations where it's all but stated, but it's never stated. So you actually write those scenes yourself. Which is very much the headspace rabid fans, aka me, were trapped in. Because from the first time they meet in the show, you can tell they have a history. We have no idea what they were to each other. Like, it's an episode where Marceline is trying to help Finn score a date with PB, which isn't really ex-girlfriend behavior. She's probably asleep. This was a really good idea. 
never mind. This is hilarious in hindsight because Marceline doesn't care what PB is doing with her love life. If Gum wants to date a 13 year old, Marcy's given the okay. Because Marceline likes hanging with Finn. She thinks he's a cool dude, but that's like the side benefit. 99.9% .9 of the reason she's here is just to screw with Princess Bubblegum. Finn? Hey Marceline. Hello Bonnabelle. Yeah, yeah. Only person in the show to dare call PB by her real name. That's a power move. In that one scene though, you have this nugget of why people gravitated more towards Bubbleine than Finn with gum. Bubblegum is the control princess. She's responsible, but always ready to hang. But the second she sees Marcy, that happy attitude just goes out the window as she realizes the hot vampire's at the door. Oh shit, here we go again. With the rest of the episode just highlighting those personality differences, Marceline runs with wolves and craves adrenaline, while PB likes to sit at home and practice whistling. Rock versus classical, oil versus water. They're opposites, and people are always attracted to that shit. But this was a blip. People thought, okay, something's up. But we didn't know just how well fed we were about to be. And like all the gay shit in Cartoon Network, it's thanks to Rebecca Sugar. Not made of sugar, am I not sweet enough for you? All right, a magical dickhead has stolen people's most important items and locked himself behind a door. We got Finn, Jake, PB, and Marceline playing music to get that thing open. Then, PB tells Marceline to keep it PG, so the vampire queen goes off. Sorry I don't treat you like a goddess, is that what you want me to do? And, uh, God, I wish I could play all this, but you know, monetization. But this song dumped pretty much everything you could possibly ask for from the initial acts of pettiness between them and the hints of them being very salty about something, only for this episode to then go ahead and confirm that they do have a history. Uh, I shouldn't have to be the one that makes up with you, so. And something that I love is how Marceline, for all the mayhem and grief she causes PB, can't take it when Bubblegum criticizes her. Like she said, that song's distasteful. And Marceline responds by going off on a power ballad, poking fun at how everyone treats PB as being perfect, and how Marceline won't. It's about how Marceline doesn't feel like PB even treats her like a person, instead just a problem to be avoided or managed, which is just so raw. And besides her dad, this is the realest we ever see Marceline go to at this point. The biggest thing is how Marceline feels like she shouldn't have to apologize for something, but then let slip that she wants to. She wants them to hang out. She doesn't just want to be a problem in PB's life, which you know, not explicitly romantic. Sugar wrote this about her own broken relationship with a roommate. Wasn't intended to be a giant gay sign reading We Used to Fuck, but that's how we took it. Why do I want to? Just kiss your fruitcakes! This episode threw Finn X Bubblegum or Finn Marceline into the dumpster. This was the only thing people wanted. People got fired over this. No, I'm not kidding. And like, people would have shipped these two together regardless. Opposites attract, they're both attractive. You know the drill. But the fact that this episode painted them as exes, that got people's attention. Because rather than trying to rationalize how two characters were definitely going to get together, it gave us a couple who may have been together in the past, and we're just watching the fallout. Clearly, they had some intense feelings between them, romantic or otherwise, but that intrigue of them being exes allowed people to buy into the ship as either just one to know what happened or being here just to see them get together again which was so easy to do because of the legal options they complement each other the best no one was really going to be shipping Marceline with LSP. Bubblegum and Flame Princess, I'm sure that abusive fanfic exists somewhere. Marceline and Bubblegum, though, were the best of both worlds. PB was shown to be oh so perfect throughout the series. PB always had a plan or a gadget to save the day, but Marceline was having none of that attitude. She doesn't believe in any of it. She fights the power, the etiquette, and all the rules PB pretty much embodies. PB is just technical in 
everything, while Marceline wings it. Her and Marceline's approach are just so completely different, but in that difference, they make each other better. Now, I love Kate and Vi, and they highlight each other's strengths. But outside of shipping, I don't think that they make each other's character more interesting. While with Bubbleine, we learn more about who PB is, and she becomes more genuine and less in control when she's with Marceline. Marceline, who is pretty much trauma porn incarnate, is at her best when she's exploring those issues. So to have her deal with those complicated feelings for PB is way better than her dicking around with Finn. So I guess the things that I most like about them are just way more prevalent when they're together, and that sense of conflict that we're getting in this early stage makes the times when they're finally happy all the sweeter. Yeah, they be acting terrible towards each other. Mostly Marceline, but PB be judgy like that. Marceline is crying after this, and honestly, I could not ask for any more. I was full. But after Finn saves the day, because of course he does, we get the reveal that Marceline didn't lose anything. She was just using the situation as an excuse to hang out with them, while PB, her most precious thing is a shirt that Marceline gave her that she always wears as pajamas. No, seriously, who watched this show and didn't see them coming? Moving on to the next example of the inevitable, we have PB waking up in the aforementioned shirt, taking a big old whiff with a picture of the two of them in the background. Fond, sweaty memories are attached to this shirt. Um, phrasing? Sky Witch is where we see PB and Marceline not really fully deal with their issues, but having them let sleeping dogs lie. Marceline bursts into the Candy Kingdom asking for PB's help, which is all the explanation Bubblegum needs, because they do still care about each other. They break into a witch's domain, and we get to see how PB's more calm, practical side can be more effective than Marceline's rush in and kill everything approach, which serves to balance out the devil may care propaganda that says having a plan is for squares. But even when they help each other out, they're still in trouble, as the fact that this whole mission is about Marceline getting back her old doll Hampo doesn't really seem to register with PB. She's kind of like your mom, saying just get a new one, not realizing how much you care about it. Because to Marceline, this was the doll that she got from Simon, that helped her get through the entire apocalypse, but she lost it when her douche ex-boyfriend sold it without her permission. PB is still willing to help, but kinda thinks it's dumb and Marceline is overreacting. Because this girl is a genius, but has a D in emotional intelligence. Using the smarts that she has, PB is able to find the Sky Witch and get back Hambo while Marceline fights a naked crow bunny man thing. And all it costs is something with even more emotional value than a doll that helped a little girl through a thousand years of hell. Oh, the psychic resonance on Hambo is nothing compared to this, baby! Again, who didn't see this coming? Not only. Does PB give up the shirt to make Marceline happy? She doesn't even bring it up. PB doesn't brag or look sad. She made Marceline happy, and that was enough for her. Because clearly, they're still in love. Now from here, we kind of get a break in content that is bubbling focused. Apparently the show isn't about them. But now on, we see that their relationship has moved more towards friendship. They're talking, they're texting. When Marceline wants to leave a boring meeting, she asks Bubblegum to dip with her. You can feel those baby steps growing into something more healthy. Because growing up and realizing which behaviors are healthy and giving up the ones that aren't is a recurring theme in Adventure Time. Finn learned how to be in a relationship. Marceline learns to stop running away and to hold on to what's important to her, while Bubblegum has a whole ass arc where she realizes that keeping people safe doesn't make her a good person. That sabotaging other nations, keeping the candy people dumb because they're more manageable, doesn't make what she does right. Phoebe doesn't have the same tearjerker backstory that Marceline does, but she does have her own fucked up shit to deal with, as she built the entire Candy Kingdom on her own while taking care of her root-suckling brother at the center of it. When she starts wanting a family, she made her own, only for them to inherit her narcissism as they tried to kill her, with her uncle even going so far as to try and lobotomize her and the rest of his family, with her only escaping by the skin of her teeth, and once the dust was settled, she realized she could just tell her family what to do and they would do it, and they would do it with a smile. And Bubblegum internalized that. She thought ignorance was bliss. And when we first meet her, she's never all that interested in fixing what's broken, only managing it, keeping it out of sight. When she had failed experiments like Lemon Grab Goat 
wrong, she doesn't deal with it. Magai's got serious issues, but she doesn't help him work through those. She sends him off to a different castle, where all of his problems just go to fester, being either too busy or just not interested in helping out her candy son, leading him to be a maladjusted ass who tortures people or worse. It's only in season 4 where she tries to help him, and that's only after everyone found out that he's been watching people in their sleep. She knew he had a problem, but it wasn't until it started affecting her and her other candy subjects that she steps in. It's that kind of neglect that ultimately leads her to losing her kingdom, with the candy people falling for the first guy who will pretend to listen to them and call him special, realizing that everything she's built, everything that she did for them, and they still would vote her out of office. And after that, she gives up dropping everything to go live in a cabin, take up gardening, and this is just my head can, drop a lot of f-bombs between glasses of wine. And Marceline doesn't even find out about all this until she strolls into PB's bedroom only to find a complete stranger. <laughs> two months. Marceline finds out two months later. All she wanted was a midnight walk in slush, but got this guy instead. Me up with everything is fine, PB, who plays off like, oh yeah, my life work just imploded and texting you kind of just slipped through the cracks. Marceline, though, is trying to be supportive. And just tells her like, hey, you could have hit me up, we could have talked. Enforces how close they are again. They're not dating at this point because the world hates me, but their friendship is back to that point where they can talk to each other about their problems. It's like, who else are they going to talk to? Finn? LSP? They are all they've got. So they shoot the shit, go on an adventure hunting varmints, and hear old stories about how they used to hang out, where Marceline was tagging tunnels and PB caught her, but Marceline likes to think of this as her getting PB out of work. Classic teen romance stuff. But PB got consumed with managing the Candy Kingdom, which just came to dominate her personality, which is that hint to what broke them up in the first place. It goes to show that these two have had this dynamic their entire lives. Marceline pushes PB to have fun, while Bubblegum is the one that makes sure they don't die. And when they get trapped in a cave with the graffiti that PB drew, this is where PB finally has that breakdown she's been rescheduling for months. And she just finally admits she lost everything. And it was kind of her fault. The years of being the dictator to keep her people safe, the constant pressure of doing more for the kingdom and managing it, and how only focusing on work pushed everyone in her life away. That focusing on results wasn't the answer and didn't make everyone happy. This scene is really great though as it is the final collapse of the great ruler persona PB has been putting up throughout the entire show, where she finally admits that she made mistakes, and that even if her subjects are idiots, they were her idiots and they wanted her gone. And of course she would be bitter about all those centuries of work just disappearing. All I managed to do was push everyone away. I pushed you away. I'm sorry, Marceline. I've been a real dinger to you. And that's kind of when Bubbleine finally stops being just two characters having fun together. They care about each other. And yeah, PB did give up the shirt, but until now it's been two people who care about each other. It was casual. They still had other friends that they would call up and had the same amount of fun. It's here, in the caves, surrounded by all these reminders of what they used to have, they realize why the other is so important to them. Understanding. Finn knows PB is 800 years old, but he's only really seen the in-charge princess and mathematical friend. But Marceline knows better. She saw Bubblegum build the Candy Kingdom. It's the reason Marceline lost PB as she was giving it her everything. So she understands how much this means to Bubblegum and how much it must hurt to lose. More than them balancing each other out, more than them being fun together, it's understanding that gives them the ability to support one another in a way no one else in the land of Ooh can. Which is why when they get out, Marceline just lets PB rest, sleeping on her shoulder as Marceline watches the garden that PB puts so much work into. Not running away, not telling her to go do something else, but letting her rest and caring about the things PB cares about. Now I want to say that these two get together right here, but no. We still have three seasons and two miniseries to go through before that happens. Which of relevance? Stakes. Marceline decided being immortal and flammable isn't for her anymore, so she uses one of PB's machines to turn herself human. Which could have led to a somber ending to the ship, but PB is into some dark fantasies. And someday, when you die, I'll be the one who puts you in the ground. We also get the first I love you between them. I love you, Bonnebelle. Yeah, me too, Bonnebelle. Jake says a joke. Marceline was 100% serious. 
And Marceline does become a vampire again. She has to defeat the former vampires of old and absorb their souls and has to absorb an evil cloud. It's adventure time, don't worry about it. But it also means the immortal power couple is still good to go on a dinner date to the Ice King's palace. Bonnie, there's something really wrong with Simon. There's something wrong with, wait, you just called him Simon. Yeah, Marceline is introducing PB to one of her dads. They hate each other, but she's trying. Skipping dessert to dive into the crown, where Marceline finally gets some closure with Simon and flex on not having a boyfriend anymore, to Bubblegum's approval. Later on in the miniseries Elementals, thanks to Crazy Elsa, the girls are turned into candy versions of themselves, or a giant version of themselves. Nothing happens, but even when they've been turned into completely different people, they still stick by one another. And in a later episode, we find out Marceline, unable to Cure PB chose to get candyfied rather than save herself, so at least they could still stick together. And history will still say they were just good friends. Which finally brings us to the finale. Princess Bubblegum is in charge of the Candy Kingdom, again, with her uncle's son Gumbald also being here with his own Candy Kingdom, and a bunch of other villains to let us down with. Marceline, having lived through the last major conflict in Earth's history, is not ecstatic about going to war, with Bubblegum understanding her partner's distress, but can't see another way out of this. Which is shenanigans, dream sequence, Uncle Gumbald fails a spot check, and Big Auntie is now in charge. Then the God of Chaos drops in to extend the runtime. Oh no! unleashing all the monsters, Finn is basically out of the picture, and PB is seemingly getting smashed, causing Marceline to unleash her vampire essence to curb stop the beast. And then it finally happens. Even back when we weren't talking, I was so afraid something bad would happen to you and I wouldn't be there to protect you and I don't wanna lose you again. <laughs> Hallelujah. After all the buildup, all the drama, it finally happened and the fans went wild. Because while we got left on red for Finn's love life, we got everything here. This was something people had wanted for over eight years. And this being the 2010s, we weren't sure it was even gonna happen. This was a good day. And it was even better than Korasami, which landmark moment that it was, feels like it kinda just happens. And that fandom was so thoroughly exhausted with romance that most people were just happy she didn't end up with Mako, or Tenzin in that one weird ass moment. Korasami, they're great, the couple is fine, but what makes bubbling worthwhile is the journey. It wasn't just people trying to do their best with scraps and headcanon, you had actual tension and attention being given to both characters, creating an actual sense of payoff when it happened. We slowly unraveled the mystery of their past, watched them grow closer in the present, and while we knew they were in love, we didn't know if it was going to get confirmed, so for it to actually happen was just so satisfying to watch. When all is said and done, we get an epilogue, with PB and Marceline cuddling up as they watch a puppet show. It's small, it's intimate, and it makes me beyond happy. As after everything they've been through, fuck, after everything we've been through watching them, to get that sweet, sweet closure as it finally happened. And while I usually talk a lot of shit about shows waiting to the finale to have characters kiss and get together, this one was well worth the wait. Boo. Oh shit, I still have to talk about Obsidian. All right, Adventure Time Distant Lands. The HBO miniseries that wasn't planned. Consisting of four episodes, two of them kind of just feel like regular Adventure Time shit, then the other two were everything we could ever want. With the true series finale of Together Again being the emotional send off to Finn and Jake with an ending that absolutely made you cry. And Obsidian, which is pure gay fan service for anyone who has ever loved Bubbleine, making me the absolute target demographic. Because yeah, they did just end the relationship off on kiss and cuddles. While the fan art was great, seeing them do it in canon is a joy my vindictive heart can never say no to, as I could hear the homophobes sob in the corner. And from the get-go, this episode is cute. 
with it showing the domestic bliss that was bubbling, building furniture together, relaxing, and are just being a happy couple going about their day-to-day -day lives. It's like they took the fan art and they animated it, and that's perfect. That's pretty much all I wanted, with the added plus of the fact that PB is still the princess of the Candy Kingdom, but lives with Marceline, which yes, get that work-life balance. Sadly, the Everything is Awesome bit ends when Marceline gets called by a glass amethyst to save their kingdom from a dragon, which fine, cool, they have to do hero shit, I guess. One problem though, this glass kingdom, fighting this dragon, is where their relationship imploded last time. So you know what that means. Drama. Also, Marceline has to deal with her mommy issues. Drama. And PB has to get an ego check. <laughs> they make it to the kingdom, and you can already feel those lingering issues bubbling up. Marceline is being extra aggro while PB is trying so hard to get the glass people to like her. Which fine, every relationship has its problems. Totally normal. Then they play the song. That why you always avoid me? That must be such an inconvenience to you. No, no. The breakup song. Yeah, Marceline rage quit their last relationship in a punk rock rant. Which yeah, very much her, deciding PB is stuck up, self-obsessed, and a bit of a dictator. Which the rebel without a cause resented her for giving the Candy Kingdom all of her attention. But this is Marceline the abandonment issue queen, so take everything she says with a grain of salt. Self-obsessed and all the rest and PB I'm so over it. And if I'm being honest, I didn't need to see them break up. Yeah, like it's cool, but we already knew all the facts of how it happened. I didn't really need to see it. The song is a banger though, so points to that. Way, you're to blame. You're a constant source of misery and pain. We also get to see how this isn't totally PB's fault, as before this, she was just trying to be responsible by not letting the glass people die, while the immortal teen asshole could care less, as she was trying to stay as far from self-care as possible. Not helping their situation is the fact that Marceline thinks she needs an angry new song to beat the dragon monster back, but is finally in a happy place in her life, so she decides to mine the last nugget of trauma in her life her mother. Plus, PB figured out her girlfriend would fail the first time and is trying to play the hero. This apparent lack of trust pushes Marceline to do the stupid thing, which is just classic then. Now, the backstory of the never-ending tragedy that is Marceline's life was that her mother was dying, so she sent her daughter away someplace safe to spare her the pain of watching her die. Not realizing that's what happened because she never hit play, Marceline internalized the view that her mother abandoned her because she saw her as a monster, and decided to become the thing that scares people away, then open up. Hold on, I have something for this. Mother. I was a monster. Again, didn't need this, but I like it. Marceline struggling with her past and seeing how she went from a cute child to an angry vampire slayer, I think that definitely tracks. Though this being young Marceline before she meets Simon and deciding to play the monster does kind of clash with the timeline, but that's hardly an issue. It works in the story. Also, watching Marmar realize she solves her issues better with PB was, yes, more of that, please. Wave of acceptance has washed over me. I love dramatic BB. But then we go back to dealing with the monster who is now out and now imprisoned with PB, Marceline, and the other guy. And finally, we get some sweet catharsis as Marceline breaks from her angry punk rock to play a soft love song, showing her feelings for PB and just how happy she makes her. My cheeks and I love that it means I'm a little bit soft. Perfect even better. And because symbolism is for cowards, we find out that the angry monster was hurt when it was little. Covering up and ignoring its scars caused it to grow into a rampaging monster, but listening to the music caused it to accept those scars, allowing it to transform into something new. Is this a metaphor for Marceline? Look, it's got a mushy center. 
Just like me. Yeah, we can totally kill it! No, it's clearly about communism. And just like that, the day is saved. Bubbleen is stronger than ever, we get to see them slow dance and flirt while PB reminisces. As one day she went to one of Marceline's concerts, watching the vampire queen throw her shirt to a cute girl in the audience, and that cute girl was her. And giving us the origin of the t-shirt that PB loved so much. He was from the first night that they met, and the first time she fell in love. The special doesn't need to exist, but I'm happy that it does. I'm happy that Bubbling exists, and it will never get old to me. Overall, it's probably the best love story in Adventure Time, most people would agree, and I'm kinda just a slut for any content about them. Okay, so my actual conclusion was earlier, so just like Obsidian, all this was extra. Thank you all for watching, like, share, and subscribe, and no, Finn isn't dating his grandniece.